Hi everyone, it's Dee here, Dee Barnes. Um, I hope you're all well and we've got another week of Wildcard Wednesday. Normally taught at the Attenborough Arts Centre but for another week you're joining me at my home studio um, and yes as I've said in the last few weeks I'm hoping that at some point soon we'll be back doing these uh, workshops at the Attenborough Arts Centre which is the university's art centre. Um, I'm not quite sure yet of any dates but when I have any dates to give you for any live classes I'll let you know. Um, so yes so this is a th Easter themed workshop this week. Hmm. What can we be making I wonder? Shall we have a look inside the box and see what uh, delights I've given you to play with this week? Let me just move the camera around and uh, uh, we'll, we'll take a look. Okay, so you'll have picked up your um, creative boxes from reception and um, let's see what's inside. Now, this week, uh, you'll the extras you'll need are um, a cup or pot or glass or something with some water in um, to have on one side. And let's just open up the box and see what we've got. Okay, so we have a cocktail stick, a pair of plastic gloves. Oh, I might put you an apron in as well, actually. You might find an apron in there because it's a messy one. Um, a lump of air dry clay, a pot of paint, another cocktail stick. A paintbrush and a lollipop stick, an ice lolly stick. All right, so let's move that round. Now, uh, we're working with air dry clay. If you haven't done an air dry clay project with me before, um, some things to be aware of, and those are that if you have very dry, hot hands, your clay will dry out quicker than if your hands are cold because the heat from your hands sucks the moisture out of the clay. That's why you want a little bit of water on the side to uh, moisten your hands if your clay starts to get very dried out. Um, so I'm going to put my gloves on. This will, wearing plastic gloves will actually help with the clay so it won't dry out as quickly. But if your clay starts to crack um, and crumble as you're working on it uh, you'll need to add some water to your hands you can put the paintbrush and the paint to one side for now and let's begin I'll just move the water away a bit so in your lump of clay now you've got a choice here I'll tell you what we're making we're going to make an Easter egg okay so you can choose to divide your piece of clay up into, say, three pieces. Um, or you can use the whole piece as, and make one big egg. Uh, but I think what we might do is make three different size eggs. So I'm going to pull a lump of clay off. And then the next one I'm going to take a little bit more off. And the third one has the biggest amount. So I can put them out here and I can kind of judge that's possibly going to take some off that one uh, and I might yeah I think they look kind of equally large medium and small so if we take we'll start with the largest one because actually it's easier with a larger piece when you're learning and the others the other pieces, I want you to wrap them up very well and leave them alone so that they don't get too dried out. What I'd like you to do with this piece of clay is break it in half. So let's just make sure the two halves are fairly equal. I can just feel that in my hands that they're a similar size. It doesn't have to be exact, but as near as you can get it. Okay? I'll put one half down. With this first ball, 
if you've got a really hot room, put that piece, just sit it in a bit of plastic as well, because it will dry out in the atmosphere in your room. Um, and you just don't want to have to be working with very hard clay. Makes everything much more difficult. Now, I will do this slowly. I want you to watch if you can. So if what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ball of clay and I'm just going to smooth it over. You can roll it in your hands gently to make it nice and smooth and round. And there you have a ball of clay. If you have very long fingernails, you will struggle to do this project. Long fingernails and pinch pots don't really work. Uh, you can, you're welcome to give it a go, but if you have long fingernails and you find that the nails make lots of dents in your work, that's why. So what I'm going to do is I've got it round like this and I'm going to get my thumb and I'm going to sit the clay in my hand like this and I'm going to get my thumb and I'm going to squish my thumb down. Now I'd like you to be pay close attention to what my hands are doing. Okay, before you begin, just pay very close attention to what I'm about to do. Right, I'm going to start pinching. This is great actually, because normally when I teach this, you're sitting at a table quite far away and you can't see. So actually it's ideal for you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. So I, you can see the shape of my hands here. I'm pinching, I'm squeezing my fingertips against my thumb inside that clay shape. I'll show it to you, look like that. And if you notice, this is quite a small controlled shape. I have control of that shape. What often happens when I'm teaching people how to make a pinch pot is they think, yay, clay, yeah, let's go. Anyone can do a pinch pot, quick, let's do it. What happens is they end up with a saucer, a flat piece of clay before you know it. And that's not what we want today. We want to try and keep this egg shape. Now what I'm doing now is I'm pushing very gently with my thumb on the inside and with my fingers I'm pulling around my thumb like this, this action, pulling it around because I want to bring the neck of that clay shape inward slightly. Okay and I'm pinching it quite gently but firmly all the way around and as I'm turning it I'm having a look at the shape that I'm making. And as you can see the space inside has got bigger and I've got a kind of half egg shape like that and I'm just going to pinch it I can feel the walls of the clay between my thumb and finger and as I pinch gently round and round I can feel that it's fairly even all the way through. I don't have any thick bits or thin bits. If you look on the inside, because I'm wearing gloves, it's quite smooth and it's quite smooth on the outside. So I'm going to put that there and I'm going to get my second piece. You can leave that one out, doesn't matter if that hardens up a little. I'm going to do exactly the same. Oops, that wasn't very good, was it? Did it round and round. Now, as I say, we're handling the clay a lot, so this is why it's important to actually wear the gloves. If you've got really cold hands, you don't necessarily need to wear the gloves because your, ha your hands won't be drying out the clay as much if they're cold. So I've got that into a roundish shape like that and I'm going to repeat that same process. I'm going to put it in the centre of my hands and I'm going to press down with my thumb so now it looks like a bit like a donut without the hole going all the way through and I'm going to start pinching from the base from here, pinch 
pinch very gently around the base of that shape and I'm very slowly working my way up the wall of the pot. You have a look at that. You see now you can see a bit of my thumbnail there. If I had really long fancy fingernails this would just be covered in little fingernail shapes. So I'm going to work round and again if you recognise that shape I'm doing this very gently. Small little pincer movements. As I work my way round I'm also pulling that neck in, the rim. Doesn't matter if it's a bit fatter over there. But what we do want is to just measure this. Now you can see that's a little bit fatter, that second shape. So I'm going to go back to my first shape and just pinch that top out a tiny bit so that it's going to measure up with the other shape I've made. That's better, they're very similar now. Okay. So what I want you to do next is you're going to get your cocktail stick. What I want you to do is score like this with the tip of your cocktail stick all the way around. Scratch it, make the surface all uneven. Now this bit of clay I'm working with is actually quite soft which is good. It's easy to manipulate when it's very soft. And I want you to do the same on this piece as well. We're going to get our little cocktail stick and make little marks, scratch marks all the way around. Then what I want you to do is dip your fingertip in the water. Just run your fingertip around the edge of the shape. Only on one side, you don't need to do it on both. Then I want you to get the other piece. And I mean, obviously it's, it's going to be a slightly different shape. But I want you to sort of fit it together like that. Okay? And I want you to just press it very, very gently. And with your edge of your thumb very gently just smooth it over like this now hold the whole thing in one hand if you get your lollipop stick what you can do now is we're going to smooth it over like this that join doesn't matter if it looks a bit rough at the moment. We'll smooth it down when it's firmed up a little. And you're going to go all the way round, joining those two sections together. like that. Okay, so then you can't see the join at all. Now you can, I'm just going to pat it really gently, just even out that shape and almost make it slightly more egg shaped. So one end's going to go in slightly more than the other. Now what you can do is get your cocktail stick, just pierce the base. This will give it a bit more of a chance of drying out. Uh, yeah. And then what I want you to do is just with your fingertip, you can also use the side of the, of the lollipop stick to just 
gently, very gently. It's very delicate. If you put too much pressure on, you'll squash the shape that you've just created. And I'm just going to go round like this. Now, as I said to you before, my clay is very soft. So I'm going to just do that middle section where I put the two pieces together. When it's hardened up a little bit, I will do a little bit more of this uh, sort of smoothing technique with the edge of the stick. Okay, so there you have egg number one. Now you can just squeeze it in a little to make it a little even more egg shaped because they're oval, aren't they? Not round. That's great. Right, I'm going to sit that to one side. Now, if you don't want it to get squashed, what I want you to do is the plastic that you've got. If you've got um, some kitchen roll or some a plastic carrier bag or something that you can... Which size? I want the medium size one next. That one. What I want you to do is kind of scrunch it up like this. Make a, a nest for your egg that you've just made to sit on so it doesn't get squashed like that, okay? which is resting there. If you've got a radiator that's on, put that on the radiator to start drying out. I have got a radiator here, so I'm going to put mine on the radiator in a minute. Right, get your next shape uh, of clay. And we're going to, again, we're going to break it in half. I'm just going to kind of go like that. Um, feel it in my hands to make sure it's as even as you, you can sort of get it. It doesn't have to be exact, as you saw from that first one. It's kind of like roughly the same. Okay, put your one piece down, get your first piece. Roll it in the palm of your hands until you have a nice round shape. If it won't go, just squish it with your fingertips like this until it does smooth over any um, dints and dents and creases because it helps when you're making it if those marks have gone. Right, then I'm going to stick my thumb in. Now you can imagine this is going to get smaller because the next one we're going to do after this is, is the smallest one. So this one I want you to do exactly the same. Go very slowly carefully with your pinching keep control of that shape altering the shape of your hands as you go like this small little pinches like that you can see it's about a centimeter thick Now you see here, that kind of like um, pattern, those cracks is when it's starting to dry out. So, I mean, my clay, as I said, is still quite soft. If that gets very cracked, just dip your fingertip in the water, run a little bit of water around it, just to keep it soft and moistened. Okay, I'm going to pop that to one side and then I'm going to get my second piece, second half of this egg. Like that, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to stick my thumb in. 
and I'm going to just turn it round while it's sitting on my thumb. So you see, and start pinching it from the base, slowly going round. And that, of course, everybody, is why they're called pinch pots. Because we're pinching. It's a very, very, very ancient pottery technique. It's probably one of the first ever pottery techniques known to man is pinch pots. And people used to make all size of pots from pinching for eating and cooking, carrying vessels, etc. in ancient times. It's steeped in history and it's so simple, but it gives you a real versatility on the kind of shapes you want to make. So you can make it with big pieces of clay. Oh, look at that. I've, made, <laughs> I've got carried away talking. Actually, it's not too bad. What I'm going to do is just pull this one out. So this one's a lot smaller. I probably had a bit more clay in that other lump. I'm just going to pull it out a little, pinch a bit more out on this one. That's better. Let's see if there's a way where it fits more. Not quite. Let's just pinch that out very slightly more. Okay, and then I want you to get your cocktail stick and we're gonna make that little score mark again all the way around. Very, very, carefully. I'm kind of resting it in my hands and just pulling that against my finger here. Otherwise you're going to pull the shape out of shape too much. If you have to keep starting again, your clay will dry out. It will eventually become just too difficult to work with, which is why uh, it's a good idea to watch me making it before you start so you understand what it is I'm asking you to do with the clay. Let's go around there again. mad isn't it because I thought this was about the same size as the other it feels much bigger now I'm holding it dab of water on there and I'm going to get that piece I'm going to sit it like this put the two halves together that's it okay then I'm going to rest it in my palm of my hands. I'm just going to go around with my fingertip first and just smooth it over. Like that. Delicately, very gently. Then I'm going to get my lollipop stick. Let's take off that clay from before. I'm going to very gently, I'm literally just cupping it in my hands, hold it too hard and it will squash the whole thing. And I'm just going to drag that round. like so. I'm going to put that hole in the bottom. As I said, when this goes a bit firmer, I can 
manipulate the shape and the surface a little bit more. It's very soft at the moment. I don't want to do too much to it in case I spoil it. So I'm going to pick that one up. So I've got two beautiful eggs. And I'm going to get my last piece out of paper, plastic, scrunch those up, sit those on top of it so they can start to dry out and they don't get squashed. And we'll start on this final piece. So if we split it in half, um, feels roughly the same. Put one piece down. I think there's a tiny bit more on this one. I'm going to start making that nice and soft again. Soft. I don't mean soft. I mean smooth. I'm going to make it smooth again. Okay. Squish your thumb in. Gently start to turn it round and round on your thumb. Pinching as you go. Like that. It's a bit uneven, but we can always push some bits down where it's standing up a bit proud there. I'm just going to turn that one over and pop it there. And do the same with this one. And we're going to squish my thumb in and start pinching gently as I go round and round. I'll show you the inside. Well, let's compare it this time. It feels a bit bigger so I've come out too fast. I'm just going to pull it in slightly by squishing it over like this. That's better. I'm happy with that. Right, I don't want it to get any bigger, so I'm going to get my cocktail stick and score around it again. Okay, that's one side and the other. Like that. Dab my finger in the water, run it round the rim, get my other piece and pop the two together like that. Push them gently together and then sit it in the palm of my hand. I'm just going to go round with my fingertip and smooth it over. like that and I'm going to get my lollipop stick ice lolly stick and I'm going to start smoothing over that join very gently literally just cupping it in my hand 
I'm not applying any pressure to it at all because if I do it will squish. Et voila! All joined. I'm just going to pop a little hole in the base of that one. Like that. And then I'm going to pop it on with the other two. If you have a hairdryer or a radiator or somewhere warm, you can sit these for a little while for them to firm up. That's what I'd like you to do next. Okay, so I've set my eggs to one side to dry out, <clears throat> go a bit harder. And uh, I've done, what I've done is I've painted one side. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Um, what I did was I painted one side and then I set them down on the unpainted side for that half to dry out. And now with you, I'm going to paint the other side because I want to show you what I did. Um, so let me get my paintbrush. Now don't forget to use your water because uh, if you don't keep your paintbrush in water when you're using acrylic paints, they dry out and they go hard and you cannot resurrect them. They have to go in the bin. So and that's why when using acrylic paints, it's really important to have some water handy. So now I want you to get your um, cocktail stick um, and uh, you're going to put it on. So you've got something to hold the egg with as you're painting it. Now you can use your hand because you've dried out the other side already. But it's quite nice to be able to get the um, stick as well because you can turn it round and round. And depending on how much paint you've got, you can use up all the paint and just go over layers and layers of gold on your beautiful golden eggs. Um, of course, if you're being very sensible, what you would do would be to put this one back down on the dry side, on your plastic or your kitchen roll or whatever it is you've got. Uh, get your next one. Pop that in. Now, as I said, you could just hold it like this because that side's dry. Um, and this large one is quite heavy, this large egg. So I'm going to make sure I've covered all the grey bits, the unpainted section. I mean, if you've got any paint left from any other projects that we've done, obviously you can go crazy and do patterns and all sorts on it. But I wanted to keep it simple this week and just give you one pot uh, with one colour in because the gold looks so good when it's dry. And the other thing I was thinking is, which of course I've used up all my clay, so I can't show you, but if you had um, any clay left, you could always make some tiny little solid Easter eggs, you know, like the ones you buy in a packet with chocolate inside. Make sure you're not around any young people or silly people who might try and eat them, of course. But, um, you could make a whole little cluster and put them in a bowl with these different size eggs, which would look rather lovely as well. So I'm going to um, and then set these to one side to dry again for on the windowsill. Open the window and let the air get to them and they'll dry really quickly.
So I'm going to set those down. They really do look great, and this paint is fantastic. This metallic paint. Oh, oh dear. It's a bit slippery. But I've got my gloves on, so it doesn't matter too much. Just going to roll that one around a bit, and that one. And use up all the paint you've got, you might as well just lather it on. And these would make a lovely um, alternative Easter present to give to somebody as well. Maybe you have friends who don't eat chocolate. I know, strange concept, but you never know. Um, there are people out there who don't eat chocolate, don't like it, or for whatever reason. So you could give them a beautiful ornamental egg. And as I said, um, put that brush back into the water as soon as you've finished using it with the paint. If you want to keep your paint for another project, these little tubs are fantastic. Your paint will stay usable in these for weeks and weeks on end. So um, don't just leave the lids off because once the acrylic paint dries out, again, like with a paintbrush, you can't reconstitute it. It's kaput. Uh, so yeah. Um, I won't touch these yet. Well, I, I, I will, because I want to just put them in my hand like that, like golden treasure. And say, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? What a wonderful thing to have made and give to a friend or keep for yourself. Put on your windowsill and stare at them and wonder at their beauty. Forevermore. Okay. Right, I'm going to take my gloves off and just turn the camera around now. So I hope you enjoyed that project. Um, it's a lovely one to do because it's quite simple, and but the end result is really stunning. And as I said, if you've got any clay left over um, from any other project or you didn't use all the clay that I gave you today. You could make some really tiny little Easter eggs and paint those gold as well. Put those in a bowl and you'll have a gorgeous collection of golden eggs, uh, which look lovely on display. So that's it for this week, folks. Thank you for joining in and joining me. Um, if you want to see what else I'm up to in my other life uh, as a practicing maker, you can hop over onto Instagram and if you search for D Barnes Designs, that's D W E, D Barnes Designs on Instagram, you'll see uh, all the other things that I get up to when I'm not teaching you. So um, until we meet again, I've, I'll have another exciting project for us to do next week, um, something equally creative. Um, enjoy the weather this week. It's going to be beautifully hot. I believe, although it's looking pretty grey today. But anyway, it's going to be, they say it's going to be hot this week. Um, have a lovely Easter break. I don't know if any of you are going away or staying with your friends in Leicester. Um, don't eat too many Easter eggs and certainly don't try eating those gold ones because they won't be very nice. Um, and what do I always say? Stay well, stay safe and stay creative. Okay, until we meet again then, folks. This is Dee saying bye.